my talk today is not from my professional background, actually. I am, truly speaking, as a Queen's Bay resident. Normally, I speak about policy, practice, and politics. I think you're going to find that I, if I succeed today, my talk will be a bit more about people, okay, in the context of fire. But that's kind of, we're talking about a community here. So I'm going to, I'm going to work from that angle. So my, I intend to sort of explain to all of you where Queen's Bay is at, both literally and figuratively. And then I'm going to explain kind of some of the things we've accomplished. I'm going to use the past, the present, and the future a little bit. And I want to, you know, hold this idea that, just in the back of your minds, is that one of the animating ideas for our efforts in Queen's Bay is that we don't intend to be victims, okay? And there's an immediate sense to that, which is, of course, we don't want to suffer loss and destruction due to fire, we want to be safe. But there's a deeper sense to that, and I hope that I can develop that idea and leave that as sort of my summing up point near the end. So, is regarding where Queen's Bay is, that's us. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the area, Belfour is north of here, it's along Kootenay Lake. That's a portion of the west arm leading off to the left and so on. That's us four miles north of Belfour. This is what we look like from the air. I don't know how, is that, is that really working out? Is that just a big blur? Can you actually see it? That's not that great. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, a couple of things I want you to point out there on the features there. I'm hoping that you can, you can sort of see the assembly of lots around the red balloon. Really, there isn't a red balloon in Queen's Bay. I don't know where that, why that picture shows that. Um, <laughs> or we took it down. Uh, uh, here, here it so you have a lot of lots in there. And it, the neighborhood comprises maybe uh, 40 households, um, about maybe 60 to, with, with buildings. And you're looking at also about maybe 200 residences. But a couple of things that, from this picture that are revealing. Note the Fortis transmission line running sort of off the north and south axis. If you picture a more north and south, you'll get a sense of where the forest starts and where the slopes begin. begin. Um, this is a little closer up picture, shows some of the lots and so forth and how they're laid out. I'm going to come back to these two sort of proposed uh, treatment blocks later on. The tadpoles you see in the picture are actually people's water sheds uh, or water intakes in that area again. Um, the, I want to just emphasize that there are two things that, are, that we're trying to approach. One is obviously uh, we want to deal with our residences. We want to deal with our homes, but we have a very strong interest in the landscape around us as well. Most of you will understand um, this photograph looking north, and uh, that on the right there, of course, is, the, is Queen's Bay, the, the infamous beach. But I actually want to, infamous because they tried to pave it uh, a couple of years ago to turn it into a, a ferry landing. Um, but I want you to note that cut block, cut block, or sorry, cut bank, that's the word I'm looking for, um, has been a feature and it's been trying to seek its angle of repose for a number of years. The reason I point that out is that Queen's Bay sits on a series of terraces that were created by, by glaciation. And as I understand the process, you can picture that as the glaciers receded, the, mm -hmm. a large block of ice remained in what would eventually become the actual lake itself. And uh, as the uh, ice receded up the hillside at the same time, the outwash and discharge caused sediment to come down and, lam and laminate against that ice block. And then when that ice block left, that's Queen's Bay. The reason I mention that is that if we were to have uh, a disturbance of significant proportions above us in Queen's Bay, one of the collateral consequences of fire, and we're talking about fire, is that the quality of the water, the volume of water, and so on, might very much put the whole community, at least a large portion of the community, in jeopardy. Where I live in Queen's Bay, if you mess around with a garden hose too long, saturate the soil, you're going to get a slough. So there's a real concern there. That's another reason why we're worried about what might take place in that larger, not only would we lose our, our water systems, but we, would, we might very well turn into a, a, a mud bath later on. And that would be a, have serious consequences for us. That was a bit of geological history. I want to just gallop through some of the cultural history of the community as well. It's, it's really important to point out that Queen's Bay has probably been a settlement for First Nations for thousands of years. The uh, shoreline guidance document identifies it as significant archaeological value. 
And if you walk along the beach, you can find, if you've got a good eye, you can see modified stones still today, and, and of course, there was shards and so of airheads. One of our neighbors up on the bench found a uh, actual spear head. And I thought uh, I, that, that obviously suggested someone had been hunting there. And that made me think that being this is a south face, uh, fur, you know, kind of forest, that probably Queen's Bay, at lo for large periods of time, existed as a kind of open savanna, not like the forest that I showed you in that Google picture, but probably a, lot, a, a much more open setting probably good ungulate range, maybe that's why the spearhead was up there, and possibly, I can imagine First Nations getting fire, they might have modified that so and kept it open to be, produce berries and forage and whatever. So it's quite likely that the Queen's Bay uh, town site, what the conditions is in today, may, not, may be actually atypical. The next group of settlers, the Victorians, whoops, wrong button, oops, not what I I'm always doing so well. Is it a blue spear yeah, wheel on the, the street? I got a, oh, it's this, this is this pizza circle of death. <laughs> Hold your breath. <laughs> How long is that, is this gonna do this? Okay, all right. Well, this is, okay, so, oh. Is it, is it, is it, I'm gonna hit the next button, okay. There we are, this is 1905, Queens Bay Wharf, the Victorian settlers are come in. Um, we we're just beginning to appreciate them and understand. Like up, my my property was settled by the Hollingsworths. I had no idea that they, in fact their relatives showed up in my yard one time. So long, long history there. They had a real impact on the landscape. Well, that's oh good. Early days in Queen's Bay. I'm, I'm not putting this up because I just want you to think of how antique things were there. But look at the landscape in the background. Okay, so um, there are lots of well, in fact, not much. Forest left at all. Um, the whole area was through fire, I think. And John, what was the name of the famous fire that we've always talked about? Granny McKay. Granny McKay fire. What year was that? Uh, early 1900s. Early 1900s. Okay, so the place is pretty much clear. And again, just to iterate, reiterate my point around um, the possibility of the slide, this home was just below, beneath where I live today, down along what would have been the highway. And that home was washed out into the lake in the 1925. And according to some of the old timers before they passed away, they said that the roof of the building floated around in the bay in the way that that backwater eddy did for the whole summer. <laughs> Two or three people, I think some people were lost in that. So again, that just goes to my point about the risks involved with um, the disturbance in our site. Now, I don't think you can see that very well, but when I first moved to the neighborhood 40 years ago, there were lots of these little bir these birch snags. These are the remnants of that fire that John just told me the name of. And they've all been falling down, but they used to be all over like punctuation marks all through the forest. So that's again, so it goes to a condition that was likely in the, in the turn of the century. That tree behind her, that fir tree, is likely at least 100 years old. And I would imagine it was a sapling the day that the Queens Bay residents were sending their young men and women off to the First World War. So that's, that's a, a, a bit of a sort of thing that we have in the neighborhood. So that's my slide so part, and now I'm going to try to work a little bit with out a net, because I want to talk to everyone about um, where we're at in, in our community at the moment. I'm going to have to pull out, because I'm going to refer briefly to my notes, and I will now put on my glasses and you all go blurry. So I, why do I have a church up? Well, it's a lovely antique building, but it's been, I think I'll start with this point, in sustaining um, our efforts to organize, particularly around something that is a seasonal threat. I have 10 minutes? Okay, <laughs> do I get stop time for the time? <laughs> I'm, gonna move, I'm gonna move even quicker, okay. So I just wanna say that the church has given, the church has bequeathed to us in 1994, I believe in that time, in that time. And so we took it over as a thing to um, manage and sustain